Hello, my name is Greg Genta, and I am a consulting systems engineer with Fortinet. Thank you for watching this brief presentation and demonstration of Fortinet's privileged access management solution called 40PAM. 40PAM is designed to provide centralized control, secure access, and comprehensive monitoring of elevated accounts, sensitive systems, and privileged operations across the entire IT environment. At its core, 40PAM operates as a bastion host or a secure jump server. 40PAM can be deployed as a VM on premise or in a public facing cloud or as a physical appliance. Users requiring access to sensitive resources must first authenticate it into 40PAM. The resources protected by 40PAM are referred to as secrets. An example of a secret could be an RDP session to a server, an SSH session to a Linux system, router, or a firewall, an HTTPS session to the web interface of a networking appliance. 40PAM supports integrations with 40 Authenticator and 40 Token, but can also work with any identity provider for multi-factor authentication, enhancing authentication security. Users can access secrets directly from a web browser agentlessly or with a client installed. We will dive into these access methods shortly, but first let's examine the key 40PAM features. Access Approval Workflow 40PAM supports up to three tiers of approval for secrets access, ensuring layered authorization for critical resources. Session auditing. All session activity is fully recorded, enabling administrators to review, audit, and investigate privileged access. 40PAM can automatically schedule password changes for privileged accounts. Users never see or handle the credentials. 40PAM manages authentication on their behalf. 40PAM can also change SSH keys when needed. 40PAM can also rotate passwords for Windows services and automatically update the services with the new password using WMI and WinRM. Secret Checkout. This enables exclusive time-bound access to a secret by a single user to prevent configuration conflicts and enforce accountability. SSH Command Filtering. 40PAM can apply granular command controls for SSH-based secrets, allowing or denying specific commands to enforce least privilege. Monitoring. Administrators can monitor real-time active sessions, terminate sessions in progress, review detailed session logs, and access or download session recordings for forensic analysis and compliance reporting. Now let's take a deeper look at the four supported access modes. Remember that with all of these access modes, the privilege session is fully recorded. Browser-based agentless access. No installation of 40 client or browser plugin is required. Agentless browser access supports WebRDP, WebSSH, WebVNC, and similar web launchers. However, it does not support web proxy launcher for HTTPS-based GUI access. Okay, the browser plugin. The browser plugin requires installation of the 40PAM browser extension from your browser's plugin store. The browser plugin supports all web launchers, including HTTPS proxy GUI access. Standalone 40 client for 40PAM. This is a free desktop application available for download. This enables the use of native applications such as PuTTY, SQL Server Management Studio, and Windows RDP, to name a few. You can also create custom launchers as well. Full 40 client with 40 EMS and ZTNA integration. This access method combines 40 PAM with our endpoint management server called 40 EMS, which includes the zero trust network access feature. This access method enforces device posture assessments via ZTNA tags. If a device doesn't meet security posture requirements, access is denied to the 40 PAM. Devices must be enrolled in your endpoint management server infrastructure. It also enforces client certificate authentication on connection. This mode provides the highest level of access control and endpoint trust validation. However, this requires licensing and deployment of 40 EMS and ZTNA. 40 PAM supports a distributed gateway architecture to securely access secrets across segmented networks. There are two main deployment models, which are the forward gateway and the reverse gateway. In the forward gateway model, the central 40 PAM server initiates the connection to the secret gateway. This is used when the central 40 PAM cannot directly reach the target network. The forward gateway can be another 40 PAM instance, 
a 40 gate firewall, or a 40 proxy. The NAT and or firewall rules must permit inbound connections from the central 40 PAM server to the secret gateway. In the reverse gateway model, the gateway initiates the connection to the central 40 PAM server. This is ideal for accessing private network resources from a publicly hosted 40 PAM server. There is no need to open inbound ports on the reverse gateway side. The reverse gateway maintains an outbound persistent connection to the 40 PAM server polling regularly to route access requests. This enables secure, NAT-friendly access across firewalled or segmented environments. We'll demonstrate the reverse gateway in the upcoming demo. Now that we've covered the architecture access methods and key features, let's transition to the live demonstration. In the demo, I'll walk through the following. Access via all four connection methods, a real-time view of the approval workflow, an example of the reverse gateway architecture in action, and session recording and auditing. Let's get started. So here's a client machine that is not joined to my domain. So this is more of like a contractor use case. The contractor connects to 40 PAM. This contractor account is a local account on 40 PAM. You can of course assign a 40 token to local accounts for MFA. You can also connect of course to other IDPs to federate for logging into the 40 PAM. The contractor user is presented with the secrets that they have access to. We're going to focus first on agentless connectivity. The agentless connection does not require anything installed on the machine, does not require a browser plugin, or does not require a client. And you'll notice up here is where it shows that I'm using an agentless connection here. And you can choose different connection methods here, but let's just do agentless first. So here is SSH access to a 40 gate firewall launch the secret. I'm going to choose web SSH. I click allow here and notice there's a little clock in the silhouetted here that lets me know that I'm being recorded and I have access to this secret and I can run a command here and this is being fully recorded and we'll close this out. Here is web RDP agentless connection here allow this recording and I get RDP access through the browser to a Windows server without requiring anything installed on my machine. Here is a HTTPS GUI proxy pass-through secret and notice I have agentless chosen here. If I launch this secret it's going to fail because agentless mode does not support web account secrets or proxy or GUI secrets, however you want to call it, but it's GUI pass through or proxying to a HTTPS GUI. So what we need for this secret is we need to turn on the extension and you can go to your browser store to install the extension. Mine is already installed on this browser and then I can launch the secret and notice it fills in my credentials here and I can log in. And notice I get the little REC in the top right that lets me know that I'm being recorded. So Agentless works for virtually any browser launcher except for GUI pass-through. You need to have the browser plugin for that to allow 40 pam to proxy that connection, but still everything is being recorded. Next, we are going to look at a client that has the 40 client for 40 pam installed on it. Okay, now I'm connected to a different machine. This machine has the free 40 client for 40 pam installed on it. Again, this client does not require any 40 client licensing or 40 EMS licensing. And this is all that you will see of the client. It's just here so that you can launch secrets using applications installed on your client machine. So again, let's log into 40 PAM. This user is a domain user and has access to different secrets. Notice here that automatic is selected, which means that the 40 client can be used to launch secrets. And that's what we'll demonstrate here. In addition to demonstrating the checkout feature. So here is a secret I have access to, but I need to check the secret out. When I check it out, that means that the secret is locked out to any other user that would like to access this secret for a certain amount of time. And now that it's checked out, I can right click and say, 
launch secret. Now, instead of doing web SSH, I am going to launch the secret using PuTTY. 40 client is going to pass the credentials through PuTTY to initiate the SSH session. And notice the little fly in here is from 40 client is telling me that I am being recorded. And I can run a command. And then I can just simply close my PuTTY session. And the fly in will tell me that I am not being recorded any longer. So that is an example of using 40 client for 40 PAM to launch a secret using an application installed on my machine. And I also demonstrated the check in and check out feature. Let's check it in. Now I'm going to show connection to a secret using Windows RDP, but access to the secret needs to be approved. So let's make a request. I'm going to request access for 30 minutes. However, if I wanted to schedule my request, for example, if I needed access to the secret in the middle of the night to do a change control, and I can choose a future date and time to get access to the secret, and I can be pre-approved so that my manager doesn't have to wake up in the middle of the night to approve my request. I can get my request pre-approved, and when the time frame hits, I'll have access to the secret. But I'm just gonna use 30 minutes here and say, this is in regards to ticket one, two, three, four, five, or something like that. Click submit. And now you can see that my approval is pending. On the admins view of 40 PAM, you can see in approvals here that I have the request. I can see that this is in regards to ticket one, two, three, four, five, and I can approve or deny this request as the admin or as the approver. Approve it and click save. Now back on this user's desktop, I can now launch the secret and I'm going to use remote desktop. 40 client will fly in and tell me that I'm being recorded. And I get RDP access to the server. And again, the 40 client fly in was alerting me that I was being recorded. And I can just simply close the session. And I get alerted that my recording has stopped. Okay, so now we have seen agentless connection. We've seen the browser plugin connection. We have seen the free 40 client for 40 PAM access connection method. Now we can show the fourth access method, which is the full 40 EMS, full 40 client and ZTNA integration. This machine that we're looking at here has the full 40 client installed on it, and it is registered with my EMS server. As you can see here, it is doing ZTNA. ZTNA tags, and we have full 40 client here. I have an interface on my 40 PAM that is set up for ZTNA access. So let's click there. Notice I get the certificate check, and then I have access to the 40 PAM on the ZTNA interface. And the user can log in, and I can launch secrets. This is the same user, but on a different computer that is part of my 40 EMS configuration. Now, if I go back to the contractor's machine, if the contractor's machine, which is not in EMS, tries to initiate a connection to the ZTNA interface of 40 PAM, notice that I get access denied. So this machine cannot get access to 40 PAM because it is not joined to my EMS configuration. Now I want to demonstrate the reverse gateway feature. As you can see here, I have a reverse secret gateway set up to a location called Jeff Lab. Jeff is a colleague of mine, and we have set up a reverse gateway set up going through a 40 PAM that is set up as a reverse gateway in his environment, and it is reaching out to my 40 PAM in my network brokering that connection. We can see here that the reverse gateway status is up, and it is ready to receive connections from my 40 PAM. So this secret right here will get me RDP access to a Windows server in Jeff's environment. Notice that this IP address range is not used in my local lab and is used in Jeff's local lab. So we simply launch the secret. I'm going to use remote desktop. 
And this is using the reverse secret gateway to get access to a server in Jeff's environment that I do not have direct connectivity to, but his 40 PAM server is reaching out to my 40 PAM server to create the tunnel so that I can access that server. This session is fully recorded on my 40 PAM server. I simply just close out the connection and notice that 40 client alerts me that the recording has stopped. Now let's look at the logs. So if I go to secret event and video, we can see the actual video of that connection. Here is the video of the RDP session to Jeff's lab through the reverse gateway. And you can full screen this. And I can also download this as well. Clicking on this button here, I can download the video. And we can see the videos of all of the secrets that we launched here in 40 Pam. And it doesn't matter if they're agentless or if they are using the browser plugin or if they are using 40 Client. You can also view logs by going to the secret. And here is where you can see the SSH filter and you can see the commands that I have ran on this machine. So 40PAM does keep a full log of the SSH commands on a secret that is using SSH. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact the Fortinet sales team for your area. Thank you.